Hello chess friends and welcome to Yuzara of Chess Channel and welcome to a very special story that I decided to share with you today. It's again a great story about the top grand master and about the rising star Alireza Firuja. Alireza Firuja is really incredible what he's doing recently. He won uh, this Grand Swiss tournament with a great great performance. He only was, lost one game but he won so many beautiful and tactical games. Now Alireza Firuja is uh, playing in the candidates in 2022 and I think he can play now much more freely because Michigan accomplished i'm now playing in the candidates now i can focus on some other thing i can maybe play much free can play more attractive games and that, that's exactly i think what happened now because alireza firuja is playing now for the french national team this uh, team chess championship and in which he's restoring every every uh, player that he's playing the only draw that he played was against my landsman ivan sharic alireza firuja really really well top on the first board has now four wins and only one draw he has now a rating performance of 3014 points which is really really a great performance great rating performance in top grand master level like this so uh, i think in the near future we can expect that alireza uh, will become also 2800 rated player and now with the great win uh, in the last round alireza firuja became the third best ranked now uh, player in the world when it comes to classical time format chess so really really well stuff you see ding Liren is on the second place but i think that alireza firuja Firuja will catch up with Ding Liren in the near future because uh, Ding Liren is not playing so often this uh, super event. So Alireza Firuja is playing more and more. So you see he's only six points behind uh, Ding Liren. Maybe with one or two wins he can be uh, the second best rated player of course after Magnus Carlsen. I think in this super event in this uh, European Team Chess Championship Alireza will get his seven points and will become a 2800 rated player and as I said the second best rated player in the world. So really really brilliant brilliant uh, accomplishment so far uh by the top grand master Alreza. i wish him all of the best but that's simply i think an outcome that we all expected Alreza is only 18 years old so still uh with 19 with 20 he'll become i think even rated like magnus carlson so let's check out one brilliant game now from the super event it was now the last game that Ale that Alreza played and this game i will use as one of my studies of the same islam defense of the czech variation uh we have uh, covered the same is love the check variation on my youtube chess channel here's the link uh i create also on my youtube chess channel the studies about opening so you can check them out uh in in my in previous months we have talked about the same is love as a good response against d4 so you can also check out my studies these studies are also from white and from black's perspective so his opponent was uh, gabriel sargisian really a respected grandmaster from armenia armenia is also really a pure chess country we have really beautiful chess players from armenia but but here you see now how uh, Alireza Firuja will play this same Islav defense in a brilliant, brilliant way. So, so let's check out now the game. So D4 uh, played here by Sargisian. We have now D5 by Alireza, C4. So I decided to flip the board a little bit uh, here from Black's perspective because, as I said, I want to really use uh, this game as sort of a cornerstone in because here I think if you want to play the same Islav defense, if you play, if you want to maybe study something against D4, this is a decent opening and Alireza plays uh, this game's almost in a perfect way so here we have now uh, c4 c6 so far the slav after knight to f3 knight to f6 and knight to c3 we have now this move d takes c4 and okay uh, you maybe uh, can get surprised with this move if you're maybe with the uh, if you're maybe beginner but d takes c4 is actually one of the best ways here to proceed because white cannot play easily this move uh, e3 e3 can be met of course with a very aggressive move b5 uh, here even if, if you try here to play the move e4 it's not even better again b5 and e5 are leading into complicated lines with knight to d5 or and then afterwards uh with some moves as b4 so this is not something that i recommend you uh to play as white so when you play d takes c4 uh here one of the best ways for white is of course to play the move a4 because now it's protecting of course the b5 square now black cannot uh here protect anymore the pawn on c4 so the point about this opening from black's perspective is not that you are protecting uh the the pawn on c4 you will lose your uh, pawn on c4 but actually you provoke some weaknesses uh here after move a4 we can see now that there are at least two clear targets in white's camp which are of course the weak b4 square but also the weak b3 square so the idea behind this opening is of course to allow white here to take the pawn on c4 but to create further weaknesses in long terms this a4 pawn can also uh be an object of black's attack so that's 
why you shouldn't be so surprised when you see this line as i said maybe if you're a beginner you can be surprised why is black allowing this central control of white because now in the near future black can also uh, get challenged with the maybe boom of like e4 but so far you see now how uh, black can escape from this ideas because we're simply playing here now the move bishop to f5 so here e3 uh, here e6 you see black gets ni a nice central grip on dark on light squares everything is uh, pretty much protected so black is still controlling this very important light squares in the center of the board okay white can have this one white they will take the pawn on c4 but that's exactly uh, what we have talked about it's not a problem because here we can attack now the weak square b4 so this is something that you want to get i think it's a decent setup because we can say the bishop is out here on a very active square this bishop is very active knight is on a natural square in the near future the knight this knight can also come on a very decent square then knight to d7 knight to b6 can happen although of course we have to say it white has a, a little bit of a strategical advantage when it comes to pawn center control because white has of course two versus one situation in the center of the board so it means white is slightly better in the center of potential progress white can maybe push the pawn on e4 but this move has to be prepared you have to prepare queen to e2 then e4 but still you see this knight is challenged on c3 the knight on c3 is controlling the e4 square so it's still hard uh, to find here progress for for white it's really hard for white to make that happen in an early stage of the game so uh, as i said please check out the studies uh, that we have uh, talked about so far in my uh, slav defense series we have talked about this check variation very very often so here's again uh, the link to the series in which i have explained also some different ideas for both sides so here in the continuation um, sargisian played casting casting also by alreza firuja and now comes this idea queen to e2 because uh, what what do you what you do now if you play uh, something else if you play knight to d7 i think you will get challenged with the move e4 and then white gets an extra tempo but here one of the best ways is actually to play again a little bit of a weird move again i will say it because it seems so that it's a strange move here to play the move bishop to g6 without even getting uh without even being challenged alireza retreats now uh here to g6 but actually this is really one of the best ways how to proceed because now you're not threatened by this extra tempo that white can get with the move e4 in the continuation of the game uh, here we have uh, knight to e5 uh, by uh, Sargisian because if you play e4 we'll simply take as I said bishop takes c3 and then you lose the pawn on e4 so nothing special gained I think here for uh, for white bishop to c3 b takes c3 and then we can take out uh, this pawn very very easily so in the continuation after bishop to g6 okay Sarg uh, Sargisian tries knight to e4 uh, here's of course attacking now the light square bishop and again you should not be worried so much about your light square bishop on g6 because the main issue is here that still black uh, pardon me white has here the dark square bishop uh, which cannot be developed very very easily so the lack of development of the dark square bishop is also one huge positional problem for white so here the continuation alireza plays now knight to d7 challenges the knight immediately because if you try f4 this wasn't played in the game but it's not so easy to support your centralized knight like this would simply take the uh, knight takes e5 whatever ever happens d takes e5 or f takes e5 will simply play knight to d5 and everything is pretty much fixed uh, i think in the continuation if you try even here knight to d5 we can play c takes d5 and suddenly white's pawn structure is messed up i think uh, black's position is perfectly fine here again with the huge huge bishops activity so really so far a brilliant brilliant position game by that is so here after moving knight to g6 h takes g6 we have a rook to d1 and now queen to c7 getting out of the range uh of the rook because in the near future the d file could get opened and then of course your queen could be endangered uh that's why a queen to c7 normal move also queen to e7 queen to b6 are also opportunities so here in the continuation now finally the move e4 but uh, it's a little bit too slow because we can break now the central control as i said in the beginning white's main advantage is of course this two versus one situation in the center of the board but now we're breaking uh, this uh, central control with the move e5 and in order to make some kind of a progress i think white needs now to play the move d5 because if you play 
uh, here's something like uh, d e uh, d takes e5 then knight to e5 gets again this knight very centralized the bishop is hanging now the dark squares are a little bit too vulnerable with bishop to d6 uh, there is always a huge huge positional problem around the square h2 this is something that you should also consider although uh, probably white is still slightly better because white uh, has a uh, bishop pair on the board and the position gets more and more open but still many times i faced really when i played the game as white uh, some tactical problems in in the check variation of the slav defense here with the move bishop to d6 and then with some tactical threat uh, threats with knight to g uh, with knight to g4 and similar stuff even some sacrifices are possible some greek gift tactics are there so uh, uh believe me when i say it i lost many many times the way uh, the game in a tactical way uh, because i allowed my opponent here to get uh, get this knight center so that's why here i from move d5 uh, was played by zagetian and now alreza simply takes bishop takes c3 here alreza gives up also this other bishop the, uh, here d6 great intermediate attack uh here by white and now queen to a5 b takes c3 we have now b5 brilliant move by reza because he's using now temporarily uh the spin on the uh, on the a file and that's why uh white needs to retreat it's not so even easy to play uh to find a good square for the uh for the bishop if you play bishop to b3 then knight to c5 will happen if you play bishop to d3 then the bishop becomes a little bit blocked out by its own pawn here so that's why uh, maybe the engine suggests even uh, this move the, that it's even better here for white but i'm not sure from a human's perspective i wouldn't be satisfied to have such a bishop pair now in the continuation of the game still the spin is present on the a file so it's a weird weird position uh, here for the bishop so that's why bishop to a2 played by gabriel salgrisian here of course there is always this tactical trap because here in the continuation we have uh, b takes a4 played by alireza bishop to a3 and finally uh, queen takes c3 here by alreza firuj and okay uh, the game is really really wild uh, the bishops are now very active we have to say the gabriel sargisian sacrificed some material here but just in order to get the bishops active mission accomplished but uh, here you have lost also some pawns we can notice now that uh, alreza has now three pawns uh, here on the queen side sargisian has of course uh, this very powerful pawn on d6 and uh, okay black's queen is also a little bit in danger so you have to uh, secure the queen f3 was played now by sargisia because of course uh, queen takes a3 is not working you get this tactic uh, bishop to f7 and the game would be over so after f3 alireza firuja realized of course the tactical problems that can happen played simply a normal aggressive move uh, getting the rook on the open file which you should do in such an open game every time when you have the opportunity of course to get your rook on an open file do it because here of course course it's an obvious uh, an obvious uh, competition now on the b file that's the only open file on the board so rook from uh, e to d uh, uh, pardon me to from d to c1 attacking the queen queen to d4 uh, attacking the king we have king to h1 c5 now alreza is saying okay i got some pawns now I'm, I'm going to push them now i'm going to uh, threaten even to push them further because when the pawn gets maybe on the third rank on the uh, second rank then uh, your opponent starts to sweat then he needs to protect every uh, every potential square on the board so that's why here alreza is announcing i'm playing c5 i'm pushing now the pawn you can do whatever you like because you cannot challenge me here in the continuation we have rook to d1 queen to c3 and again rook to uh, c1 but okay alreza doesn't want to of course to prepare perpetual plays now queen to f5 found great uh, escape route and now this is now clear pass pawn this is also pass pawn so the bishops have to stay here of course the bishops as i said have good activities but they are also a little bit stuck in order to defend the position further so here rook to d1 we have queen to b5 now reza wants to trade off the queens because it's a very important thing now to simplify the game by having here these three extra pawns on the queen side of course as i said white has this one but uh when we trade off more uh pieces then of course we start simply to push this for and the cool part is this defensive setup in which uh, these knights are protecting each other and there's not a good way how white can make progress uh with some moves like d7 because black has played a powerful block it so here we have bishop to c4 queen to c6 rook from a to c1 and now rook to b6 attacking now finally also this weakness in the continuation we have queen to f2 and now queen to c8 here alreza firuja 
is trying uh, to play queen to b8 and take out this pawn when he takes out this pawn then i think it's game over here for white in the continuation sargisian played i think now huge mistake queen to g3 because he allowed now uh, alreza Firuja to attack the pawn a better idea would be maybe something like h3 uh, g3 just in order to maybe stay a little bit further uh, with the position like this because if now after h3 if you now challenge uh, uh, here the, uh, the pawn on d6 then of course uh, we can take at least we can take out this one and then uh, probably uh, white uh, pardon me black has to take after queen to c5 okay maybe um maybe black can take out uh, the pawn on d6 in the near future but uh, at least um, the position gets more and more simplified that's that's i think the main issue but after move queen to g3 you cannot protect your uh, d6 anymore here queen to b8 was played bishop to a2 rook takes d6 queen to g6 here sargassian found really a beautiful tactic but it's not working uh, you have to always consider when you play this wild tactics and uh, especially when the bishop is uh, used in the, like this then of course we can always cut off uh here the connection with the move knight to d5 and that would be actually the best suggested move by the engine alreza firuja didn't play this move but i wanted to show you really a wild line what would happen actually if um, alreza firuja would have played the move knight to d5 then queen to d6 queen to d6 and after rook to d5 queen to c7 uh here of course uh, white can build this very powerful battery on uh, the default but now with the knight to b6 and then rook to c5 the game becomes really really wild still the engine gives you a plus three evaluation for black so alreza firuja was probably uh seeing this uh, tactical possibilities but for, he was probably not satisfied uh with his outcome because it's not a clear outcome uh, i think even from a human's perspective this line that alreza played i think was much more clearer he played rook to d1 normal stuff rook to d1 and now queen to b5 uh simply escaping from this tactics now queen to b first queen to g5 you see white loses another tempo and now he sneaks in with the queen queen to e2 again these moves are maybe not the best suggested moves by the engine but see it forces really something here here after move queen to d2 alreza as promised he wants to simplify the game rook takes d2 and now rook to c8 king to g1 now alreza has i think a decent really comfortable uh, end game in which basically white is the one that's struggling now i think in this scenario where maybe white uh, would sacrifice the queen for rook and the bishop then the game is still tactical then you have to calculate many possibilities for white for black here it's an easy end game uh, of course maybe uh, if white plays the game correctly then white can struggle but really only struggle for a draw but if black plays of course the end game correctly black is winning this game for sure so king to f2 here alireza maneuvers this knight knight to c5 very cool move we have bishop to uh, b2 and now knight to d3 here alireza cemented this knight very on a very very active square here we have uh, bishop to c3 a3 we have bishop to d2 and now uh, rook to c5 we have king to e2 the problem is now this tactic maybe bishop to c4 uh, is not working because you get this one knight to c4 you get first a check and even if you take out uh, the spawn it seems so that everything is uh, glued together but now you get this one knight to b2 and you have to step back uh, from the defense of the rook you can maybe only sacrifice the rook for the exchange but it simply gave him over so you cannot really take out this pawn that is supporting this very powerful knight on d3 that's the main issue from this point on it's a one-way ticket of course uh, it's simply a completely completely winning end game here for for alireza so king to e2 was played knight to f4 even if you take here bishop to f4 uh e takes f4 this is simply such a brilliant brilliant end game here because we can simply push the pawn for this one particular moment we can i think even uh trade off this bishop for a knight because there are simply too many uh, too many pass pawns that white has to protect and this is simply not possible only with the rook and the king so king to f1 uh, was played by um, by white we have rook to b5 we have uh, bishop to c1 and now a brilliant move by reza firuja here uh, we have uh, rook to b3 if you take of course a takes b3 then c takes b3 uh, the rook is a little bit stuck here and now with knight to c4 a to our opportunities this pawn storm is simply unstoppable here on the queen side so the knight will be included into the game so uh, it's simply one position to resign so here rook to c4 uh, we have knight takes c4 by malareza bishop to b3 
uh, by Sargassian and now knight to uh, d3 attacking also this other bishop here in the continuation bishop to g5 knight to a5 bishop to a2 but you see now how these knights are dancing uh, against these bishops we have bishop to d2 knight takes a2 knight bishop to a5 knight to c1 bishop to uh, c3 a2 bishop to e5 and here knight to b3 king to e2 and after a1 the promotion or oh, white is forced now to give the bishop for a pawn we have knight to a1 king to d3 and here after knight to b3 in this position uh gabriel sargassian resigned so really really brilliant game here by reza firuja uh he played almost like a top engine here uh, and uh, as i said in my opinion this this slav defense uh, this check variation is really a brilliant opening uh, if you want to play it because this three knights variation that white plays knight to c3 will be often met with this d c4 idea let's go back to the opening stage as i said it's something worth uh, to study uh it's really a tricky opening i think uh, black can really have a decent game white is pretty much to to go forced to play the main line with the move a4 now bishop to f5 and now e6 bishop to b4 i think you have a decent decent game so okay congratulations to alreza for winning this game as i said his rating performance in this event is 3014 he is now the third best ranked player in classical time format chess uh, he's now near to 2800 he's of course the best uh best junior um, chess player in the world without any competition he will become i think in the near future one of the best chess players uh, in in the world be prepared this is simply a little as a time so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really enjoyed it a lot if you want to uh study uh so this uh, this love defense more check out my series so far here's the link of our uh, studies uh, from from the past and if you want to study maybe the best chess games of all times check out my best chess games of all time series with also some great games from the past by, by Mikhail Tal, uh, Gary Kasparov and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course